Hello and welcome to this film which is all about conjugate pairs. Now hopefully you've seen the introductory film to the acids and bases topic and you've seen some of the key terms that we're going to use in this topic. This film I suppose is about introducing some other key terms and in particular what we mean by conjugate pairs and we're going to use things called hydrolysis equations to show how an acid can turn into its conjugate base and how a base can turn into its conjugate acid. Okay, so to begin with, we're just going to have a quick reminder of some of the important acids and bases that we've been introduced to. And everything that we do in this film is going to be related to these four acids and bases. Okay, so we've got hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and ethanoic acid, three acids, and a base called ammonia. Right, so without further ado, let's have a look at what happens when hydrochloric acid is placed in water. So it's going to react with water, and that's why it's called hydro. Lysis. So this thing is breaking up, lysing, and it's breaking up because of the water molecule. Okay, and what we can see here, hopefully, is that the HCl is giving an H plus ion away to the water. Okay, and in doing so, it's becoming Cl minus. Right, so it's lost an H, but it's lost an H plus, so it's become more negative than it was before. Okay, in the process, water picked up that H plus and become, became H3O+. Right? Now what we can see in this equation is that the blue things are kind of related to one another. In fact, they only differ by one H plus ion, and that's what makes them a conjugate pair. Similarly, the things in white here, the water molecule and the H3O plus ion, or the hydronium ion, they are two substances that only differ by 1H+, and so they're a conjugate pair. Now, we know that hydrochloric acid is an acid, that means it gives away H+. The water here is accepting H+, so it's acting as a base. The hydrochloric acid gives away its H+, turns into Cl-. This is an acid. This is a base, because if it accepted H+, it would turn back into that. So it could act as an H plus acceptor and turn back into that acid. The fact that this acid can turn into that base and that base can turn into that acid just by giving or taking H plus means they're a conjugate pair. And it means that this is the conjugate acid of this base and this is the conjugate base of this acid. Similarly, water here, which is gaining H plus, is a base in the reaction. If H3O plus were to give the H plus back to Cl minus, as we've discussed already, Cl minus would be acting as the base, this would be acting as the acid. So again, we've got a conjugate pair here, they differ by 1H plus. This is the thing that accepts H plus to turn into this, this is the thing that would give away H plus to turn into that, and so in this pair, in this conjugate pair in white, this is the conjugate base, this is the conjugate acid. Okay, let's illustrate that with another couple of equations. Here we're looking at a diprotic acid, one that has two H plus ions to give away. It's called sulfuric acid. Now, because it's got two H plus ions to give away, we could write two hydrolysis equations for it. Right? We could show H2SO4 giving away H plus to water. So water once again here acting as a base because it's accepting H+. H2SO4, sulfuric acid, would turn into the hydrogen sulfate ion. They're a conjugate pair. They differ by 1H+. This is the conjugate base of this acid. And this is the conjugate acid of this base. How is this a base? Well, it could accept H plus ions from H3O+, and turn back into H2SO4. Right? So again, H2O is the base, H3O plus is its conjugate acid. HSO4 minus, the hydrogen sulfate ion, has another H plus ion to give away. And it could do that by giving away some more to water. Water would again be acting as a base. And we'd be turning hydrogen sulfate into the sulfate ion. So these are a conjugate pair. Here's the conjugate acid. Here's its conjugate base. Now, sometimes you'll see this um, reaction of sulfuric acid with water written as one equation. 
Okay, so you'd have H2SO4 reacting with two water molecules and producing SO42 minus and two H3O pluses. Bear in mind that the HSO4 minus that we form in the first equation gets used up in the second. In this equation, it's not so easy to see conjugate pairs because HSO4 minus, uh, sorry, H2SO4 and SO42 minus don't differ by one H plus, so they're not a conjugate pair. Anyway, here's another acid. So just to illustrate once again what we mean by conjugate pairs, this is ethanoic acid. We've seen the fact that it has four H's in it, but only one of them can be given away. So it gives this H plus ion away to water. Once again, water is acting as a base. This loses H plus, it becomes more negative. It's lost an H. So here is the ethanoate ion. It is the conjugate base of ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid is the conjugate acid of this base. How is this a base? Well, it could accept H plus ions from this donor. This is a donor, it must be an acid, and it's the conjugate acid of water because they differ by one H plus, and this is the one that gives away H plus ions. This is the one that accepts, so it's the conjugate base. Hopefully we're getting the hang of this. Now we're going to look at a base and a hydrolysis equation, so that is to show ammonia reacting with water. Now, ammonia might look like an acid because it's got lots of H's in it, right? But we need to remember it's a base. That means it's a proton acceptor. Water is able to give away H plus to ammonia. In the process, water will lose an H plus. It will become OH minus. So these two are also a conjugate pair. They differ by one H plus. But in this case, water is the acid and OH minus, or hydroxide ion, is the base. If ammonia accepted H+, it's going to become more positive and it's going to gain an H. So the ammonium ion is the conjugate acid of ammonia and ammonia is the conjugate base of the ammonium ion. So the difference here was that bet uh, between this and the other equations that we've seen is that water was acting as an acid. Now because water is able to act as both an acid or a base, we call it amphiprotic. Amphiprotic meaning it can either give or take H plus ions. And we've seen that in all these equations that we've seen in this film. Okay, we've seen ammonia taking H plus from water, and we've seen all these acids giving H plus ions to water. Now you might come across the term amphoteric as well. And so it's important to understand the difference between amphiprotic and amphoteric. Water is amphiprotic and amphoteric. Amphoteric means that you can react with acids or bases. Now, If you think about it, if you're amphiprotic, you can give away H plus ions or take them, then you must be able to react with acids and bases. Aluminium oxide, which you might remember from the periodicity topic, is an amphoteric oxide, which means it can react with acids and bases, clearly can't give or take H plus ions because it doesn't have any H plus ions in its formula. So whilst we do call it amphoteric because it can react with acids and bases, we don't call it amphiprotic because it can't give or take H plus ions. Okay, so as we've seen there, a few more important key terms came up. Hopefully you understand what a conjugate pair means and how we can relate an acid with its conjugate base and so on through the use of hydrolysis equations. Hopefully it all makes sense. If you've got any questions or comments, then please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.